Welcome to my 18th video in a series about shooting rats with an air gun at a dairy in western Washington state. The rat population at the dairy went completely out of control a few years ago and for about a year I've been killing rats and giving them permanent naps as you can see in the graphic. This video does include images of rats being shot and killed with an air gun. So if you are offended by these images, please leave now and find something else to watch. This is the gun that I use to shoot the rats. It is manufactured by Crossman. It's Benjamin Woods Walker 22 caliber precharged pneumatic pistol carbine combo. It's actually a pistol that comes with pistol grips. It also you can take the pistol grips off and put the shoulder stock you see on it there as well. As you can see I've got an infrared flashlight clipped on the bottom. I've got a laser sight on the grooved receiver on in front of the magazine there. And I have a Sony HDR SR11 camcorder, high, high definition camcorder that sees and records infrared light with its night shot feature. This is the T67 uh, infrared light. In this, in, in, in this picture I do have it mounted on the air uh, reservoir cylinder but I have since moved it back and clipped it directly onto the forearm. As it turns out I was getting some accuracy issues that I finally tracked down to as I manipulated the light and tried to move it around. The top of that clamp was hitting the barrel shroud and actually slightly moving the barrel. This is the uh, Vector Optics Viper Wolf laser sight, infrared and green lasers. Infrared laser is invisible to the rats of course so that's what I use. These old tires are used as weights to hold down plastic on top of the feed in the feed bunkers and when they're not being used to hold the plastic down they get stacked off to the side and the rats move in and set up shop and next thing you know they've got a pretty good castle. Because of the short gestation period of the rats, about three weeks, and the fact that a female rat can reproduce or, or can breed again the day after she gives birth, and the fact that they have up to 16 young per litter, it doesn't take long when you provide some habitat like that. It doesn't take long for the rat numbers to explode. This is about a 25 yard shot. This guy was uh, on the other side of a big puddle there next to some vegetation and pretty soon his buddy comes to check things out. I guess he decides he'll have a snack while he's waiting for his friend to wake up. Big surprise. Real typical reaction, the hind leg kick, tail movement. Sometimes it's far more animated, sometimes it's subdued like this one. Now this was a heart shot and typically for heart shots they can, the animals, whether it's rats or deer or elk, they'll have a burst of energy that is quickly over with. It's a very humane way to dispatch the animals, in this case get rid of the rats. And then that last little foot kick. This is in the calf barn 
where the calves are fed grain and I stumbled upon one of my hunting partners, one of the farm cats, in there looking for a late night snack. So I leave and go elsewhere and let it hunt. There's a calf right behind the leaned up pallet there. Perfect shot for the rat. Calf doesn't have any idea what's going on. You have to keep in mind that you and I can see very well with the infrared light and the camcorder, the night vision. But to the rat and to the calf, it's dark. Mostly sensing what's going on by smell and by sound. This video was shot in November of 2015. A lot of vegetation, mature vegetation standing up. Can be kind of challenging to seeing the rats, but you work at it, you can get it done. This is the back of a sleeping barn. Rats burrow in underneath the foundation and there they can go through inside to be with the cattle where the feed is and the protection and then they can come out and uh, get whatever it is they get outside in the nice tall grass. This is a young rat. Um, one of the things I've noticed more recently is that as I've killed off the rats and lowered their population and the cat population at the dairy has increased that I'm seeing fewer and fewer young rats and I believe that the predators, the cats, the coyotes, the owls, the other animals who see the rats as a food source are understandably trying to catch the younger rats. They're probably more tasty, I would assume. Haven't tried it. But I think they're probably less dangerous than trying to fight an adult rat. This guy was um, laying up on top of the mud there and Gave him a couple of good whacks, and he gives me the evil eye, and over he goes. I probably have a lot of rat curses on me by now. This is about a 25, 28 yard shot. There's an old sliding, uh, rolling door for one of the barns that the wind got hold of and tore it off and just smashed it. And they've pushed it off to the side. The rats find it's a wonderful habitat. This is another example of a good, clean shot, but a lot of quick animation and then lights out. Still not ideal, I suppose, in the sense of shoot them in the head and they lay down and die, but very quick death, very humane death from the time of the shot until an animal quits moving is a matter of a very few seconds. Far more humane than the use of poisons, which would also kill off those cats and coyotes and probably some bobcats. Um, Eagles, hawks, owls, dogs. And here is a rat in the feed lane where this is the feed for the cows. They come right out and get their share. And it's a good place to shoot. 
when you can catch them there because there's no, no chance of ricochet. The energy of the pellet is absorbed if it goes through the rat is absorbed easily and is not going to bounce off uh, hard surfaces and injure a cow. And peeking through the metal lattice work that they use for the temporary calf pens, I caught this guy, and then his buddies decide that they're getting out of Dodge. And there's even one up high here on the left. Yep, pulled his head back. They can see or sense the infrared light and the more I hunt there the more the survivors are the ones who are more wary and the ones who can see or sense the light and have learned to avoid it so it's increasingly challenging been working on some thermal imaging for sighting haven't perfected that yet though. Should make some interesting videos when I get it done. And this is the start of the big pile up. This is in the calf barn once again. You can see all the round nice round holes that they've chewed through the plywood dividers so they have their own passageways. The rats will chew through just about anything. There are a lot of examples there in the old tires where they have actually chewed their way right through the tread portion of a tire. Made a nice round hole so it makes a nice home for them but it's incredible that they could chew their way through a tire. And here's number two in the pile nap time for rats looks like a snake uh, cobra or a snake charmer there should put in some Middle Eastern music to go with that and here comes number three they get very curious when their buddies uh, don't behave as expected and I'm seeing more and more evidence of cannibalism as I go along rats that I shoot that are dead 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 and come back by half an hour later and they're gone or I catch a rat they're actually dragging them away and uh, I don't know how prevalent cannibalism is in rats. I do know that in hard times that the mother rats will have a litter and turn right around and eat them all. But during times of plentiful food, that's less likely to happen. There's number four. Once again, good solid head shot. All of that kicking that you see in the tail motion, a well shot rat as the British friends like to say, has been explained as being preloaded fight or flight responses that are actually lodged in the spinal cord and ready to go but are held in check by the brain that shot took the brain out of the equation and all of those loaded preloaded fight or flight responses in the spinal cord are being sent willy-nilly out to the muscles and you get this kind of a response it looks like a long death now I, I, you see the white liquid leaking out of this rat if that's milk then that was a lactating female who would have had a litter stashed somewhere with any luck uh, I killed off uh, 
a dozen or more rats by shooting that one. Some of the calves, the calves in this barn are fairly young and they are companions to the rats in a sense, I suppose, in that, the, as you can see here, the rat is, uh, knows I'm there and is hiding. I guess you could call it cat and mouse, but if I really wanted to butcher the English language, I'd call it calf and rat, but I would never do that. Oh, there we are. Play and hide again. And this is the mistake right there. Good clean shot, no chance of hitting the calf, and we have a dead rat. Mission accomplished. The Benjamin Woods Walker is an excellent weapon. It's small, lightweight, compact, has a terrific trigger. I love the trigger on that uh, Woods Walker. It is the same as the Benjamin Marauder pistol, just dressed up with some Realtree camo surface paint, and it comes with a red dot sight that the pistol doesn't come with. Now there's number five in her pile up. I'm going to give number five another touch and oh, nap time for number five. It's a perfect weapon for this kind of work. Shooting 22 caliber, 14.3 grain Crossman Premier hollow point pellets at ranging from 700 feet per second down to about 600, maybe 590. It gives me an average uh, foot pounds of in the 12 and a half, 13 and a half foot pound range. Plenty enough to kill the rats, but not so much power to cause ricochets which could injure the animals. Now, this is a very unusual thing. This calf, as I'm searching around, I see it chewing on the rat and I have put out a previous video called the strange behavior of rats and cows cows and rats whichever I titled it and had never seen anything like this you'll see more of it in the video to come at first I thought the calf was actually going to eat the rat which Thankfully, it didn't happen. These two guys, they went to wherever dead rats go. However, the universe recycles them and us and everything else. Peeking from behind a jug, there's a hole through the wall back behind there. And it's a, one of their ways into and out of the, the calf barn. The rats do a tremendous amount of burrowing damage. They're, they are incredible diggers. And uh, there's a place down near a feed bunker where they've actually damaged the shoulder of the paved road. Here's our nap time pile up. It's not unusual to have two or even three rats. Now this one I miss. Just to the right. We broke out a piece of the plywood. I'm close enough that there would because of the offset 
of the infrared laser sight. It sits just slightly to the left of the center of the bore because the sight has green laser on the right and infrared on the left. So there's a little bit of parallax to adjust for, not just up and down, but left and right. I didn't quite make the adjustment on that one. But to have five rats in a pile up like this, and that pool you see down there in the back is blood. You'll see that in a color photograph at the end of the video. And this one I don't miss, but it unfortunately doesn't fall out into the pile up. It falls back behind on the other side of the wall. This is the side of the big barn that's been there for hundred years, I suppose. And some of the siding uh, has uh, opened up and the rats take full advantage of that. Of course, they chew a lot of it up, too. Yeah, that's uh, killed. I have killed hundreds of rats right here. Hundreds. And once again, we're in a feed lane. And that's where the Rats and the cows eat together. Great chance to kill off the rats. <laughs> I don't know what that little jump was about, but oh well, I might as well have a snack. Too late. Once again, good solid headshot. Animal is dead in terms of brain function. Look at that preloaded fight or flight response. It's a younger rat and they tend to be more energetic when going through their little death dance. As you can see, the shooting the gun, killing the rats around the cows most often may elicit a little bit of curiosity. Of course, once again, it's dark for them. And once again, that classic hind leg kicking, tail, helicopter tail motion of a well shot rat. I do like that term. Now that was a head shot. You still see the body through the hole. So another shot, just for fun. Out he comes. And you can see a certain amount of moving around and then a very quick death. Whether the headshot was fatal, you want to keep in mind that that rat's brain is way smaller than his head. It's maybe, maybe the size of your little fingernail. Maybe, maybe even smaller. And you can shoot them through the head and not hit the brain and do a lot of damage, but uh, if you don't take the brain out, then follow-up shot is, uh, is useful. Try to keep it as humane as possible. I do respect the rats. They're such a successful species. But they're admirable in a lot of ways. They're good parents. They're very family-oriented. The females will take over. If a, if a female is killed, another female will almost always 
take over the litter and see to it that they're raised. A lot of things that as human beings we would find very admirable. They just breed too fast and do too much damage, carry too much disease. Now we're back to our little calf who's discovered that her chew toy. I was so fascinated by this that I just kept the camera on her. I did not know what she was going to do. And for the next six or seven minutes, this is what you're going to see unless you move ahead at the end of this sequence of calf chewing on rat. I have a group of color photographs of the rats that I shot. I like the contrast that the you, know, you, you look at this sanitized version in the night vision green mode and then you see the color photographs and it makes it much more real as to what it is we're doing here. This crazy cat. I just it, she chews on the feet she chews on the tail. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. I've never seen anything even remotely close to this. I, I know that cows in general and calves in particular can be very curious. They can chew on or swallow all kinds of things. I know that from my early life working on farms and dealing with livestock that we would go to the feed store and one of the things I was fascinated by were these big cylindrical magnets about well, three quarters of an inch in diameter and with uh, they were maybe three inches long with r smooth rounded ends that people would actually feed to their cattle, get it down their gullet, and it would pass through and come out the other end. And On its way through, any nails or pieces of wire, any ferrous metal that was uh, lodged inside the cow that the cow had swallowed would get carried out with the magnet, and then they could retrieve the magnet and get the cow cleaned up a little bit. I've seen examples of cows chewing, a friend farmer left his uh, pickup door open, driver's door open, and walking around looking at the, at checking his cows, checking his fences, and when he came back, the uh, cows had been in, got it, their heads into his pickup, got their heads down under the dash and had pulled half the wiring out from under the dash his pickup wouldn't run. He had to walk back to the farm and get somebody to come and get his truck and fix it. They're very curious and they will chew on just about anything, but I've never seen anything like this. If anyone has any idea as to what's going on here or have witnessed anything like this, if they could put it in the comments below, I would appreciate it. This is a new one for me.
at the end of all this rat chewing one of the photo the first photograph I believe that I show is the rat itself and you'll be able to see that there is no actual damage to the rat no skin broken or anything so the calf hasn't been chewing on it in such a way that it was trying to dismantle it or tear it apart or whatever. It's a much more of a gentle process. I wondered if it was sensing, I don't know what. I have no idea. I can speculate only and that is of no value. And right next door, our nap time pile up. And so here are some of our stars. This is the well-chewed rat. Once again, no worse for the wear. Just all covered in slobbers. Most of the rats that I shoot, are they don't fall into places that it would be reasonable to try to get to, to take a photograph with my phone. It uh, is wet and muddy here, a lot of cow manure, a lot of obstacles. So the ones that I can, I, I do try to photograph. So to provide a bit of contrast as to as I said before, that sort of sanitized version doesn't show the, the night vision, doesn't show the out and out carnage of the, of the pile up here. We want to keep in mind what we're doing. We're killing a lot of other intelligent animals for reasons that suit us and meet our needs, and reasonably so. But in the grand scheme of things, it would be better if we didn't have to do this sort of thing. But since it needs to be done, and since I'm an old throwback who likes to shoot, likes to develop weapons systems, then... I'll keep going out in the uh, countryside at night, listening to the crickets and the frogs and the coyotes, and killing rats. Probably a huge flaw in my character, but I really do enjoy this. Keep watching. More videos to come. Thanks for watching.